kick it, Jackie Chan. Oh, Jamar Chase with the dive. You know, Garrett Wilson's wide open. Garrett Wilson, touchdown Barrett. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video in the World of Juice channel and welcome back to another episode in the Revival series. That is right, we're back. Last time we took a look at Denard Robinson's career and we revived him to be an all-pro quarterback, X-Factor, and be pretty dominant. So... Today, we're going to be taking a look at somebody that has a special place in my heart. Former Ohio State quarterback, Terrell Pryor. This man is a very special man to me. He was the first quarterback that I remember watching and in college and being just absolutely stunned at how talented he was. He was the Ohio State quarterback in my book until obviously Braxton Miller showed up on the scene and blew all that stuff out of the water because Braxton Miller was unbelievable. But Terrell Pryor really started that. I watched Troy Smith play a little bit, but I was still kind of young for that. Uh, so I, I, I watched Troy Smith. I watched him win the Heisman. I did all that kind of stuff and go to the championship game and lose it to Florida. Stupid Tim Tebow. But... Terrell Pryor was really, once I was getting into, like, my teenage years and my early teenage years and really, really getting into football and college football, Terrell Pryor was that guy. He, he was amazing. And it's unfortunate that his Ohio State career ended the way that it did and Jim Trestle's Ohio State career ended the way it did with the whole Tatgate scandal that... In the grand scheme of things, if you look at it now, it's not that big of a deal. There's a lot worse things that have happened before that, that have happened since that, that are worse than what Tatgate ended up being. But it caused Jim Trestle to be fired. It caused Terrell Pryor to not be the quarterback of Ohio State anymore. And he went into the NFL. And unfortunately for Terrell Pryor, he was in the supplemental draft, which I don't even think is a thing anymore. That's how crazy Terrell Pryor's career has taken and then obviously it didn't work out as a quarterback in the NFL but he did make it somewhat as a wide receiver for a couple of years with like the Browns and the Jets and maybe a couple other teams he was a wide receiver for and he had a, pro a couple productive years he was a good receiver because he's a big body guy and now he's I don't even know what he's doing nowadays he might be a coach somewhere he could just be I don't know just laying on his couch I have no idea what he's doing now but we are going to completely change all of that. And we are going to turn Terrell Pryor into the quarterback that he should have been coming out of Ohio State because he was unbelievable in college. So hope you guys go and enjoy this episode of Revival Series. If you do, leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club, leave your suggestions for people you want to see me change their careers. It can be present day guys. It can be past guys. As long as it's within like the reasonable time of like the mods that I can handle, which is like, 2007 to 2024 like modern day so in that kind of time span i can't do anything earlier than that so leave a suggestion if you want to see somebody get revived or if you want to see somebody's career altered like we've done with dejuan johnson mr irrelevant from this past draft in 2023 and with uh, the tight end oh, why am i blanking on his name right now Oh, the Notre Dame tight end that plays for the Panthers. Now, Tommy Tremble. I knew I'd get there. <laughs> if you want to see somebody's career like that, that hasn't really had a career, and then we make them have a career, leave a suggestion as well. But today's Revival Series episode follows Terrell Pryor. Let's go make this man the best quarterback in the league. So here we are in the year 2012. Terrell Pryor, the backup quarterback to Carson Palmer, but we will make him the starter for the purposes of this video because, as you know the rules, the only rule is that the person we are following must be the starting quarterback or the starting or a starter on whatever team we're playing on. So Terrell Pryor obviously has to be the starting quarterback. We'll probably just either get rid of Carson Palmer or just, I don't know, just let him walk. I, don't, I have no idea. 
he won't be on the team basically. But Terrell Pryor, 60 overall, normal development, 23 years old, his second year in the league because I couldn't. Uh, I, I, this is the earliest mod that would have had Terrell Pryor. <laughs> I guess I could have started in 2007 and then just that, that would have been too long. So we start here in the second year in the league for Terrell Pryor. He's got the physical attributes that you want. 92 speed, 89 excel, 80, uh, 92 agility, 92 throw power. He's got a cannon. But his accuracies as a quarterback are not where you want them to be. So that's why he's a 60 overall. He's going to take some time to grow. It's going to be a minute. It's, it's going to be a minute. It's going to be along the lines of Denard Robinson. But I do believe that Terrell Pryor can become a big-time quarterback because he's... He's a big body, like I mentioned. He's 6'6", 230. That's a huge quarterback. He's along the lines of Josh Allen, which is why I've gone with the Buffalo Offensive Playbook because I feel like he he's going to... I'm going to want him to play how Josh Allen plays, and except for the interceptions, of course. And Josh Allen is a big body quarterback with a huge cannon arm, and that's what I want Terrell Pryor to become. So that's the kind of style we're going to go for for Terrell Pryor. Hopefully he can become something amazing now the rest of this team is garbage trash you've got darren mcfadden who's past whatever prime he may have had you've got no receiving options for uh terrell Pryor to throw to no disrespect to dhb but this he's not good uh, the offensive line needs a lot of work there's no tight end options defensively it's maybe even worse than what we had on offense this team is so bad so bad Oh God, it's it's the reason they they pick in the top of the draft for most of their time in the in the 2010s. So we're gonna have to do a lot of work on this on this team to help Terrell Pryor become the guy that he is. But like Denard Robinson, I will go through and help Terrell Pryor artificially with the training boosts and stuff. So we're gonna do some target passing here with our guy Terrell Pryor to maybe give him that boost. Um, outside of just the regular XP and stuff and hope that he can have a star development upgrade or something like that. And with the 92 throw power, I think that's already more than what Denard Robinson had. I'm, I can't remember what Denard Robinson's throw power was. I don't think it was higher than 92. It could have been. Maybe towards the end it was. I don't remember. Oh, that should have been too... That should have been too... Uh, two targets bro blocked or broken there, I guess. Can I get three here? Ooh, I almost got three. But obviously, this is the, the first time we're seeing Terrell Pryor. He feels pretty good. He feels like he's a quick, athletic quarterback. He's got a huge arm, as you can see. Throwing that ball, like, what, 60 yards down the field or something? So, he's got a big-time arm. We know this. He just doesn't have anybody to throw the ball to. And it looks like we're not going to have that, that good of a start here. But this will obviously, we'll get to see, this is good because we'll get to see, oh, I didn't break any there. We'll get to see his progression from this first training camp to the final one when he's actually good. And we'll get to see, there we go, broke one, or broke two. We'll get to see how easy it is, hopefully. That's the goal, at least, is to have it be easier the first time than it is this, or the last time that it is the first time. Should we get to silver? No, we, we don't even get to silver there, so... The training camp in, in year one does not go ideally perfectly. That's okay. It's only year number one. He gets 1,000 XP out of that, and that's only for bronze. So that'll help, and that might even give him an upgrade point right off the bat. I don't know for sure, but it doesn't obviously didn't give him an upgrade point right off the bat. But he's definitely going to be put into the... Uh, oh, he needs 3,000 XP to get up to the next level. That should be pretty simple. I'm going to put him... I'm going to do what I usually do. I'm going to put him in the... The weekly strategy, I'm going to put him in the training camps, the focus players, and he's going to, he's going to progress. That, that's, that's the goal. He's going to turn into a guy. He might have got it already. Did he get an upgrade point already just from simulation? No, he did not. This team's not going to do very well. I'm, I'm just letting you guys know right off the bat. This team is not going to do very well. But here we go. Let's put him in uh, Marquette King. I forget how young... Or how old, I guess, Marquette King is. He feels like he shouldn't be in 2012, but he is. We're going to put Terrell Pry right in there, and we're going to start training. Now, obviously, I will off-camera, as I'm simulating, I will do some of those, um, actually jump in and do the targets to get him even more XP. But for the purposes of just getting to the, to the regular season, we will 
uh, just go through that like like uh, just regular simulating. But he has not gotten the upgrade just yet. How many upgrade points will we see in one season? I doubt that he's going to have that good of a year one, just simply based on the fact that this team is not good. But we are winning. We got a training camp standout. Who's this? We are winning preseason games. I know the preseason literally does not matter. Lamar Houston. Okay. Lamar Houston gets an upgrade. He's a training camp standout. I'll take that. That's a big dubs. We go over here, start the training again. And maybe this time, he, he only needed 3,000 or 3,200 XP. It's not like that's going to take that much. So maybe he can get it right here as an upgrade point. No. But Darius Hayward Bay is now a 70 overall. So he's a usable wide receiver. No, he's, not, he's not usable. He is certainly not usable. We get through the first preseason. And no upgrade for Terrell Pryor. He makes it through the whole preseason with no upgrade. Not even up to a 61. That's diabolically bad. But I need to go through here and make sure that he doesn't get cut. Because that would be awkward. <laughs> that would be awkward if Terrell Pryor gets cut. So I got to go in here and cut all the people that don't matter. And it frees up a little bit of money. But we're, we're always going to have a little bit of money. Because Terrell Pryor's contract is not anything crazy. That is certainly not Matt Liner. I don't remember him having that much melanin. Uh, David Osbury, Curtis Taylor, Brandon Myers, Jamie, Jamie Cumbie, come again, Eddie McGee, Brandon Underwood, God, these guys are just bad, this team is garbage, bro, I thought that said Derek Carr for a second, <laughs> this team is trash, absolute garbage, and see, Terrell Pryor probably would have been on the list of guys to get cut, there he is right there. Jack Crawford, I'm going to keep Jack Crawford. Rod Streeter, I'm going to keep Rod Streeter, too. Uh, what'd that say? Oh, I can't cut that many D-tackles. Uh, okay. What'd that say? You cannot release the minimum roster size. I still got two guys to cut. There we go. I don't have any... Apparently, I don't have any running backs or, or our right ends or defensive lines or anything like that. We're going to cut this tight end. I can't cut anybody. Somebody get cut, please. Good God. Who's the last guy that's going to get cut? It can't be you. It's got to be a fullback, right? Thank you. Thank God. We got no depth, apparently, on this team. And the team's already bad. But we have like $117 million, as you as you may have seen right there. So we're, we're going to be fine on money. And Terrell Pryor's contract is very favorable. If we go and take a look at it, team salaries... Terrell Pryor's contract, he's got five years on his deal for 300 k He's making 50 k for a couple years. Yeah, he's not expensive at all. He's not expensive at all. So we've got plenty of time to work out a, a good team with a cheap quarterback. And we are going to not do auto-generator. We're going to do the 2013 class. That's what we do when we do these kind of videos. So 2013's loaded in. And as we know, historically, 2013 is pretty garbage. But we've done 2013 many times on this channel so we kind of know the deal on how good some of these guys are at this point and is it justin houston oh, it was lamar houston why do i think it was justin houston lamar houston maybe he can go and become a stud that's always the fun part about these kind of videos is going back in time and seeing not only terrell priors or the person you're you're controlling's career change but seeing some of the random guys on the team's career get better and stuff i'm just gonna start this dude Bergstrom, Bergstrom is just going to start at left guard because he's got development trait, so why not? And I, I kind of want to start Marcel Reese at tight end, but he started at fullback, so we'll keep him there. This team is hot garbage, but maybe with the Buffalo playbook, we'll play a little bit better than we should. I don't know. I'm going to simulate year number one. I'm going to go through every week and do the weekly strategy with Terrell Pryor, hopefully get him upgraded even more, and... As always, if something interesting happens with him, most importantly, if he gets a development trade upgrade, I will bring you guys back in to show you. Uh, but most most definitely, we're not going to be seeing anything, I, I would think. So, unless something crazy happens, I'll see you guys at the end of year number one. Okay, we wrap up year number one with Terrell Pryor. And this Buffalo playbook did some work. Some overtime work. It's going to need to get paid overtime because this Raider team has no business winning five games. And that's exactly what we did. So I need to see these stats and see how Terrell Pryor performed in his first season. 3,100 yards, 15 touchdowns, 18 interceptions. That's not good, but he's getting better. Like, he's going to get better. We know this. He's progressing. 
these are obviously year number one stats. He's he's a sub 70 overall. Obviously, his stats aren't going to be amazing. Crucially, he still does not have a tag for like franchise quarterback, quarterback of the future, nothing like that. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Darren McFadden had a whatever season. Terrell Pryor rushing the football, 296 and 2. We are in the Josh Allen Buffalo playbook, so he, you're going to be seeing those numbers go up as long as uh, he goes up. Hayward Bay had a good season for what it's worth. The rest of the team, if you care about on defense. Rolando McClain killed it tackling-wise. That could be another guy that we hope uh, has kind of like a secondary goal of getting him to become a really good player because Rolando McClain for a time thought was thought to be like, oh, Rolando McClain's going to be amazing. Obviously, that didn't end up happening, but he could, he could turn out to be something in this. That'd be pretty fun. I do have him alongside Terrell Pryor in the focus players thing so he's getting extra XP on top of how he plays during the, the weeks so maybe he can turn into something I think he's already grown maybe two or three overall from where he started so that, that's a good sign but we are in the Super Bowl it's time Patriots Falcons a little early for that but let's see what Terrell Pryor grew so he's still only normal development that's okay it's I didn't expect him to go up to start development this first season but he has gone up to a 66 overall. So we took him from a 60 to a 66 in one season. That's a six overall progression from year one to year for the for the start of year one to the end of year one. That's a good start. He's got up 95 throw power as well. He started with 92 throw power. Now he's got 95 throw power. So he's got an even bigger arm than what he started with. He's gonna get better. He just needs better players around him, and that's what these off seasons are for. So let's get to the offseason we have a ton of money i did bring back a couple of guys during the simulation i re uh, renegotiated their contracts to get them re-signed some of the okay players i brought back marcel reese i brought back shane leckler some guys that i didn't want to see go falcons beat the patriots in the super bowl matt ryan gets uh gets one over on tom good job for that rogers wins mvp and offense player of the year no surprise there andrew luck and bobby wagner are the rookies of the year we don't really care about that because that doesn't involve our guy TP. So let's get to the offseason. Let's re sign some players if we need to. Let's sign some free agents to help this god awful squad and get to the draft, which unfortunately is the 2013 draft, and there's not many people that are talented in this draft, but it's what we're stuck with. So negotiations. Gerald Veldier, we will accept the option on him. Zach Hurd's gone. Parsons gone. Tyvon Branch wants 85 or 81 million. You're, you're just not going to get that. Uh, Lucas Nix, Philip Wheeler is a star development player, but he's 26 million. I'd be, I'd be willing to do that. Maybe I don't want any of these guys back. All these guys can take a hike. Uh, even Rod Streeter can go. Unfortunately, the only guy that I might consider is Philip Wheeler, but that's a little bit of little chunk of change for a 28 year old. He is star development, which helps out a little bit. I'll pay him seven million over four years with a bonus of six million. And we'll see if he accepts that. He's going to come back. Okay, so that leaves with $143 million to do some damage with. I think that is uh, perfectly fine. We can work with that much money. <laughs> Maybe. Although the off-seasons, the free agent periods are never that kind to me, are they? We'll see what happens. You got kickers. You got safeties. There's Tyvon Branch. He's got 22 offers. He's just going to go somewhere else. I was not going to pay him that much money. Dwight Freeney, 33 years old. Yeah, this first free agent period is trash. Channing Crowder wants 18, or 18 people want Channing Crowder. I say there's nobody that, I don't want anybody. I'm, I'd rather keep all this money and spend it on something else. There is nobody that I'm willing to, willing to go after. So we will skip right to the draft. And we will look to draft maybe a wide receiver, I'd say. Probably some offensive linemen if they're available, but this draft class is kind of bad, so offensive linemen might not be in uh, massive quantities. We'll see what we can do. Obviously, 2014 draft is a little bit, little bit more favorable for all the different positions with the guys like Aaron Donald and Ono Beckham Jr. and and guys like that, Zach Martin. Plenty of talented players in that class, so we will look for that one next year to possibly be the one that changes this team but let's start the draft we are picking at pick number six picking at pick number six number one pick is Ziggy Anson no surprise there he usually goes number one in these or at least top three Mingo goes Eric Fisher goes and then Desmond Trufant so we pick at number six and there's a lot of talent on the table Tavon Austin 
we could kind of do like a, a double build where we build up Tavon Austin and Terrell Pryor. That could be pretty fun. I drafted Lane Johnson in the Denard Robinson one, and he didn't really factor in at all, so I'm not going to take him in this one. Uh, Darius Slay's big. Kyle Long would be big. But this is a top 10 pick. I got to spend it on somebody worthwhile, which could be Sheldon Richardson or Tavon Austin. I know for a fact that Tavon Austin is not that good in this draft class. But like I said, this could be a fun little two for one. Or maybe I should just give Tavon Austin his own video. I'll probably do that. I'll probably just give Tavon Austin his own video. We can do that at some point. So I think I'm going to take Sheldon Richardson with this one. Sheldon Richardson hopefully helped that defensive tackle spot because Lord knows it needs it. And then we go to the second round, pick number six. And hope that there are some other talented players. Luke Jokel and Lane Johnson still on the board. Well, they're just begging me to take Luke Jokel now. I took him last draft with, with Denard Robinson, but now there's nobody else that I really want to take. So I'll take Lane Johnson. I mean, if you're just going to leave him here and let me take him, then I'm not, not going to decline. Lane Johnson, welcome to the squad. Third round. This is probably going to be the only one, the last one that I do. Depending on Luke Jokel still on the board. Uh, Menelik Watson, Armani Bryant, Brandon Williams. Ooh, Tyron Matthew. That's probably who I'm going to go with. I thought he'd be gone by now. Tyron Matthew, welcome to the squad. We do need a safety. I think I just let Tyvon Branch go. So, uh, Tyron Matthew, welcome to the squad. I'll go one more round. I'll go fourth round. We'll see if uh, there's any sneaky, sneaky surprises on the board that have made it to the fourth round. Uh, David Bakhtiari, but I think he's a low overall, so that might not be the right the right move. Same thing with J.C. Treader. I think those guys are low overalls. John Simon, Quentin Dial, Kyle Juszczyk. Kenny still still on the board. What about wide what are running backs? Monty Ball, nah. Wide receivers, you got Kenny Stills. Man, I was a big fan of Stedman Bailey coming out of college. I thought he was going to be huge. There's an Robinson. That could be fun. Uh, no tight ends. Man, the more I think about it, the more I want to take David Bakhtiari. Demontre Moore, William Golston. Gerald Hodges. Ugh. Micah Hyde I saw down there. I'm going to take David Bakhtiari. There's nobody else that I really want to take. So I'm pretty sure he's a low overall, but I think he has superstar development, so that's huge. All right, then I'll let the CPU handle the rest of it. And we'll get to year number two with Terrell Pryor. We brought in some crucial pieces. We brought in Sheldon Richardson to help the defensive line. We brought in Teron, uh, Teron Matthew to help the cornerback room until we eventually probably move him to safety. So I feel like we did a good job there. We got a 76 overall in Sheldon Richardson, a 74 in Lane Johnson, 72 in Matthew, a 69 in Bakhtiari, but we knew that going in that he was going to be low overall. And then they, bought a, they drafted a bunch of scrubs. Okay. Best player in the class, if you're curious, is Desmond Trufant, Big Play Slay, and DeAndre Hopkins. We got the second best player in the class, technically, if you count all those other guys tied for first. But year number two, a 66 overall. So we gone from 60 to 66. Can we get up to like a 72, a 73 possibly in year number two? That'd be amazing. And hopefully we get star development as well. So Terrell Pryor will be the starting quarterback, but I will generate the best lineup just to get those rookies in there. And then we'll move Terrell Pryor back up to the starter. Um, Bakhtiari is backing up right now. I could put Lane Johnson at starting left guard or right guard. I'm going to do that just so he can get some play time. And the offensive line starting to look a little bit better now. We still don't have a tight end. We still don't really have any weapons for, <laughs> for uh, Terrell Pryor to throw to, which is going to hurt his progress a little bit more. But Matthew and Matthew is going to be number one corner. And Sheldon Richardson and Lamar Houston. Rolando McQueen's also star development. And we have two middle linebackers, which is not ideal. Or we have Philip going to play in two, two different positions, so that can't happen. All right, hopefully this team loses a bunch of games and we get a high pick. We'll find out. I'm going to simulate the end of year number two, see how Terrell Pryor's second season goes in the league. And uh, obviously if anything crazy happens, like he gets a development trade upgrade, I'll bring you guys back in. But other than that, I'll see you guys at the end of year number two. I fear we have taken a significant step back. We've come back down to earth, you could say. 1-16 for the Oakland Raiders at this point. Yeah, I don't know what kind of 
drugs we were on in the first season where we won five games. But Terrell Pryor has quarterback of the future tag now on his player tags. That's huge. He had a very bad season, though. 3,200 uh, 32 yards, nine touchdowns, and 23 interceptions. He was god-awful this year. But quarterback of the future. That's promising. And he got more yards on the ground, so that's something. Darius Hayward Bay almost had 1,000 yards. And then defensively, Philip Wheeler looks good. Rolando McClain, Rolando McClain looks good. And that's his award winner. Did he win Defense Player of the Year? Or maybe he won Linebacker of the Year? Something. He won something. That's his award winner. And then Ty Tyron Matthew had a decent year as well. All right. This is uh, <laughs> not the kind of progression I wanted to see. But as long as, remember, this the, the point of this video isn't to win a Super Bowl with the Raiders. It's not to rebuild the Raiders. It is to make Terrell Pryor the best version that we can. And we're on track to. Because I, I think we're developing. The Patriots are back in the Super Bowl again for the second straight year. Hopefully they win it this time for my sake. Uh, but we've got him up to a 70, what is that, 71? 71 overall quarterback. Things are looking bright. We we took him from 60 overall in year one to 66 at the end of the year. And now we've taken him from 66 at the start of year two to 71 at the end of year two. Progression is progression. Now, he doesn't have star development still, which is going to hurt his progression. Maybe Terrell Pryor can be the first guy that I've ever seen be like a 80 plus overall with normal development or 85 plus with normal development at quarterback that could be pretty crazy i guess we'll find out patriots please do me the service of winning a super bowl so i don't have to cry in my sleep tonight and they, they lost well it looks like i know what i'm doing tonight patriots lose to the birds they can't beat the birds they lost to the falcons in the first year now they lose to the eagles i hate it here i want to i want to not be alive right now michael vick is the quarterback of the eagles and he won a super bowl great just fantastic i love it here i love it all right we got more money in free agency or in cap room to spend in free agency hopefully as long as the free agent class is good but Knowing this mod in 2012, the free agent class is not going to be that good, especially because we just did this with Denard Robinson not too uh, long ago. So we'll see what happens. Steven Wisniewski, we will accept his option because we need a starting center. I did resign a couple of people during the simulation. No, Nobody too massive, just a couple of guys that needed... A, I think Darren McFadden needed a new contract or something. So we will bring everybody back that we want. And hopefully we can continue to build this team. It's the 2014 draft, so there's there's going to be some good players available. It's just a matter of what do I want to spend my money on in free agency. And it doesn't look like there's anybody that I actually want to spend my money on. Another year of free agency where there's nobody here that I want. That's going to get upsetting here pretty soon. I got We got to start getting some weapons for Terrell Pryor. We simply got to start getting some weapons for Terrell Pryor. Maybe that starts here in the 2014 draft. Maybe we draft a wide receiver or two because Darius Hayward Bay is not going to get the job done. We got to get a tight end for him to throw to because the Buffalo playbook is, is kind of heavy on tight ends with like Dawson Knox and stuff. So we're going to have to find a tight end that we can work with. And we got to get a running back that's probably better than, than Darren McFadden. I don't think he's going to be the guy for us. But luckily for us, we're going to have the number one overall pick. So, number one overall pick can definitely help us out. It's the only question is, do we trade down? They want us to take Khalil Mack, which is who the Raiders took in real life. I mean, that would really help us out. I'm not going to go for Aaron Donald. I always go for Aaron Donald. Oh, I, I go for Khalil Mack a lot too, but Khalil Mack's just so good. I could, but this is the number one overall pick. It's got so much value. The number one pick is unlike any of the other picks. It has so much value that we could even probably trade down and still get some good stuff. And I just simulated the draft. Well, we took Khalil Mack. Oh, that's... Uh, why do I do that all the time? I hope they took good players. I guess let's find out. Who did they take? Khalil Mack, Kelvin Benjamin, Jarek McKinnon, Jack Muhor, Richard Rodgers. All right, so... These guys are positions that we need, obviously. 
but they're not the guys that I would have taken. Khalil Mack's cool. I, I, I would have considered taking Khalil Mack. We know how good he is. But Kelvin Benjamin, maybe this turns into a story about ch uh, turning Kelvin Benjamin into a stud. But that's not what I meant to do. I did not mean to simulate that. Ah, oh, and it had to be the 2014 draft too. Ugh. Okay. So I screwed that up, but we do have a good team. Or we, we got a, a, good, a couple good players. Maybe we can turn Kelvin Benjamin into something. He's got development traits, so that's that's okay. We're going to make Harry Bay the number one, and we're going to make Kelvin Benjamin the number two. I'm also going to put him in in the weekly strategies, the uh, focus players, and we're going to see if we can turn him into something. But Terrell Pryor starts year number two, or year number three, at star or at uh, 71 overall. So hopefully we can do something with that. Hopefully we can do something with that. And now the offensive line looks a little bit weird. So what we're going to do... We've got some depth at tackle, but not at guard. We're going to start Barksdale at guard because he's a 79 overall with star development. We're going to start Richard Rodgers at tight end because why not? And then on defense, Khalil Mack. Oh my god, Lamar Houston, superstar development. Philip Wheeler, star develop, superstar development. Tyron Matthews, an X-Factor. What the heck happened? <laughs> what the heck happened? Okay. The defensive line looks elite now. We still need some work on the linebacking core, but we got Rolando McClain, who's a star development player. I wish he would have went up to superstar. That would have been helpful. We will see what happens in year number three. 2015 draft is on the way. I'm going to continue to do my thing. As always, if something happens with Terrell Pryor where he goes up to start development or something, I'll bring you guys back in. But other than that, I'll see you guys at the end of year number three. And hopefully this year, Terrell Pryor takes that next step. That is more like it. Terrell Pryor in the offense has gotten us 11 wins and a playoff appearance here in year number three at the end of it. How did Terrell Pryor do? Tell me he played really well. He has quarterback of the future. Still, I thought that. Wait, did he have quarterback of the future already? Or did he have franchise court? No, he would have had quarter. Or uh, he would have already had quarterback of the future and not franchise court. Okay, so he still has quarterback of the future. My hype is is justified. Thirty eight hundred yards, thirty four touchdowns, twelve interceptions. That's gotta be star development. If I had to think about, it. like he has, he's had nothing, and that says that Darren McFadden is award winner. Does that mean he won running back of the year? Somehow, there was, or Kelvin Benjamin just had 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns. This offense was booming. No wonder we won 11 games. Rolando McClain continues to dominate tackles. I really hope that the season that Terrell Pryor has just had allows us to have him have star development because it's really difficult to go up. We lose in the first round of the playoffs, which is, is very Madden. Very Madden. But... I really hope that because of how he's done this, we've gotten star development. Because if he doesn't have star development, then it's just so difficult to grow somebody from normal development. I, it's, just, it's difficult, man. You got to have that extra XP boost. It's the finally the Patriots aren't in the Super Bowl. It's Vikings and Ravens of all teams. Does he have star development? Please tell me he does. He doesn't have star development. How does he not have star development? He had a crazy season. He's playing up. He's he's up to a 74 overall. He's got to have it. Khalil Max got X Factor. Philip Wheeler somehow has as start of, or X Factor now. Chimney Chequa, Chequa has um, start development. So does Michael Huff. Okay, the defensive line is looking really really good. The linebacking core needs a little bit of help though. Somehow, some way, Terrell Pryor still doesn't have it. <laughs> Oh, it's getting so difficult. We're already entering year number four. We're going to be entering year number four in this simulation. I don't know if there's any more I can do. I don't know. If he's he's getting up there in age. He's going to be 26 years old, which is entering the prime, you could think. Vikings killed the Ravens, by the way. Uh, Jared Allen gets a ring. Aaron Rodgers wins a bunch of awards like he normally does. But without no without star development, I don't know if there's any more we can do to help Terrell Pryor. I'm trying my best. I'm giving him everything I can. Maybe we could go to Kansas City's playbook instead of Buffalo's playbook, just as like a kind of last di last ditch effort to try to get him anything. I did resign a couple of guys in uh, the regular season. I will bring back Michael Huff because he's got star development now. I know he's 32 years old. We shouldn't have to pay him too much. Maybe like four million each. Okay, he's gonna come back. 
and I'll save the rest of the money for hopeful free agents. Maybe there's going to be somebody there this time. We need a couple linebackers. We need a couple of corners. And we probably need some safeties as well. <laughs> uh, but I don't think there's going to be anybody there that's what we need. Peanut Tillman's 34 years old. Why is the free agency just a bunch of tackles? Ugh. Free agency is just a bunch of tackles. Mason Foster I'll go after because we do need a middle linebacker so that Philip Wheeler, stop, Philip, Philip Wheeler stops having to play both positions. So I will go after him and I'll go after a corner just because we need to spend some money. So we'll go after, I don't know, maybe we'll go after a year or two of, of Brent Grimes. He kind of wants to be here, so maybe that'll help us out a little bit. All right, so those will be the two guys that we go after. Hopefully we bring them both in, and we only brought in Mason Foster, so... Let's go and get another corner. I guess it doesn't matter. Peanut Tillman, you want to come here for two seasons? I know you're old. Uh, no, he doesn't want to come here either. All right, who wants to play for, for me? <laughs> None of these corners want to play for me? I almost don't even want to go down this far. It's not even worth it at that point. We, we'll just bring in Mason Foster and then have to ride with it. We'll have to ride with it in the, the draft. But at least Philip Wheeler has a has a backup, so he doesn't have to play the so he doesn't have to play the position anymore. So Foster will go in there. Okay, so the defense is is interesting. Chimdi Chikwa will now go down to be number two corner with Tyron Matthew. Do we need to change the scheme at all? We can go to a vertical zone run on offense, and we can go to a base. Four, three, no, three, four. We'll stick to three, four. And I'll go to Kansas City as kind of a last-ditch effort. See if maybe that will help Terrell Pryor's game. Because he's got a big enough arm. He can throw the Patrick Mahomes routes. He's got 95 throw power. His accuracies are starting to grow. His short accuracy is still pretty garbage. I'm trying, man. It's difficult. Without that extra XP boost of the start of element, it is difficult to get these guys to develop. <laughs> I'm trying my best. I am trying my absolute best. But since we made the playoffs, our draft pick isn't going to be amazing this year. We're not certainly not going to have the number one overall pick like we did last year, even though I fumbled the bag. Although we took Khalil Mack, it's not that big of a deal. I guess it would have. I would have been more upset if it was mocked to take like Derek Carr or something. <laughs> I would have. I would have been more upset. But we got a good guy for the team. It's not like we came away with the scrub. But we need to get. I think we need to get wide receivers. We got Kelvin Benjamin. He did okay. But I feel like we need to get some receivers or some sort of help for Terrell Pryor because he's just not hes just not getting the job done. I mean, we did good with the receivers that we had, but number one pick is Amari Cooper. Okay. Then Dante Fowler. There goes one of my wide receiver options, Amari Cooper. Okay, so Jameis on the board. Ooh, I got to go Brandon Scherf. We got we to gotta get that offensive line figured out. So Brandon Scherf, we can move him to guard. Easy peasy, done with that. All right, second round. Second round. Who's available? Randy Gregory is available. We could take Randy Gregory and then have... We could move... Uh, What's-his-face? Khalil Mack up to outside linebacker. That would fix our linebacker problem. Let's take Randy Gregory. I don't know if he's going to have a development trade, actually. He might have normal. He does have normal. Okay, but I still like that pick. That's still a fine pick by me. We'll see what his actual overall is. I honestly don't know. I don't ever take Randy Gregory in these, so. Uh, let's let's take a look at receiver. Oh, Stefan Diggs. <laughs> There's the receiver. There's the receiver that we needed. All right, perfect. I'll take one more player, maybe, and then we'll get out of this round, or get out of this draft. Um, let's see. There's a couple corners, but I don't want any of them. Bobby McCain, uh, McCain. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. There's not a whole lot of viable pieces, is there? <laughs> uh, there's a tight end, CJ Uzama, Jesse James. I think both of them have normal development, but I'll take, I'll take Jess. Uh, no, no, he's a blocking tight end. I'll take CJ Uzama. Maybe he's going to have a higher overall than Richard Rodgers. But we're going to Kansas City Playbook, so it <laughs> doesn't really matter, I guess. All right, we got Stefan Diggs. We got Brandon Scherf. 
the Randy Gregory one, we'll see how it turns out, but I like that draft. We did a good job with pick 21, I think. Randy Gregory ends up being a 65, uh, so maybe the, the Cleo Mack move up is not the, the right idea. But maybe we could turn Randy Gregory into an outside linebacker. What does he turn into if I switch him? If I switch him to right outside linebacker, what does he turn into? He turns into a 63. Okay, and that's not going to happen then. I'll keep him at a right end, and we'll see what we can do. But we know we got money with Brandon Scherf and Stefan Diggs. Best players in the class, if you care. Byron Jones, 77 overall. All right. Finally getting a guy like Stefan Diggs is going to, I think, massively help because Stefan Diggs is awesome. So Terrell Pryor has an actual number one receiver to throw to. We're in Kansas City playbook. We'll generate the best lineup. We're going to make Kelvin Benjamin number one. We're going to make Stefan Diggs the number two. We're going to turn Brandon Scherf into a guard. We're going to turn him into a guard so he can play immediately. Right guard. He now jumps in as the right guard. Perfect. All right. And then we'll see what happens on the rest of the offense. And then defensively, it's whatever on the linebacking core. Chimney Cheek was going to be a number two corner. Samples the starting strong safety. I don't really like that, but Cheek was got to start at corner, so. All right. <laughs> another year year number four is about to be in the books as always if something interesting happens with trail prior i'll bring you guys back in if not i'll see you guys at the end of year number four Welp, terrell Pryor in the kansas city playbook seems to be a good match 11 wins again this time in the wild card but unfortunately it's against the dynasty the patriots are here terrell Pryor second in the league in passing yards so it looks like the kansas city playbook really is a good thing to use 4600 yards 31 touchdowns six interceptions if this doesn't make terrell prior star development then nothing will it's just that simple this is a good enough season to progress to star development i really hope that he does 33 uh 330 yards on the ground kelvin benjamin had 1300 yards and 12 touchdowns stefan diggs did okay obviously richard rogers is going to do well because we're in the kansas city playbook Rolanda McLean and Chimney Chiqua doing really well also. So I really, really, really need Steph uh, Terrell Pryor to have star development after this season or it's gonna it's not gonna look good. I don't see this going very well, but maybe something could happen. We actually got the W. We actually got the W and play the Kansas City Chiefs in the divisional round. Wow, okay, maybe a little Cinderella type of run? Do we have a Cinderella type of run in us? I don't know if that's going to be possible, but we will try it out. Richard Rodgers is slowly creeping into the 70 overall range, as you do when you're in the Chiefs playbook. Speaking of, let's see if we can beat the Chiefs and go on a Cinderella run. No, they, they squash our dreams in the divisional round. Oh, please give Terrell Pryor star development. Please give Terrell Pryor star development. I really need it. They actually made it to the Super Bowl, the Chiefs did. Please give Terrell Pryor star development. Please, 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 please. Thank the Lord, baby Jesus. He actually has star development. Kelvin Benjamin has superstar. Diggs has X Factor. Richard Rodgers has star. Thank the heavens, Terrell Pryor has star development. And then defensively, Team needs a little bit of work, as as you guys know. But Van Dyke now has star development. That's cool. And the, the team looks good, question mark? Competitive. Competitive. A playoff team. But Terrell Pryor getting star development is a massive win. Because I don't know how much longer we're going to go in this. I feel like we've already turned Terrell Pryor's career around. He's a quality NFL quarterback. He's more than a quality NFL quarterback, as the Chiefs go on to win the Super Bowl beating the Packers he's more of a quality NFL quarterback he is a starter in this league he is a top starter in this league Geno Smith is the quarterback of the Chiefs if you're curious Rodgers wins another MVP shocker but I don't think we're gonna go much longer in this video I feel like we've accomplished our goal of turning Terrell Pryor into an actual 
good NFL quarterback, a guy that you would want on your team, and now that he has start development, that kind of solidifies that. I did renegotiate with a couple of guys to bring them back. We'll accept the option on Sheldon Richardson. That's kind of crazy that we have to accept the option on Sheldon Richardson already. We drafted him in this video. <laughs> that just tells you how long we've been going. We are going to be entering year number five. It's going to be year number five, I'm pretty sure. Hopefully Terrell Pryor can change his fate once more. But there's just simply no good players in this in free agency. I don't know what it is. There's just not many good players. There's a 28... Ooh, there's a 26-year-old Drake or Patrick. Maybe that'll be something. I could certainly add Drake or Patrick to the team. I would not hate that. And then maybe we could add some safety help, too. Reggie Nelson at 33. Malcolm Jenkins. About a Mosey wouldn't be bad. I would prefer that. He's only 73, but he's got star development. That helps more than what we have. And then maybe we go after, like, I don't know, strong safety. There's not too many people that I want, really. I'd rather just stick with the guy that we have, to be honest. Which is not that great, but I don't really think we have any other better options. Okay, I didn't mean to back out of that. I think we should be able to get those guys and then... Especially Drake Kirkpatrick is the one that I really want. And we got both of them. We got Batamosi and we got Kirkpatrick. That'll help the, the secondary slightly. So that's good. At least the secondary gets a little bit of help. Generate the best liner. Jarek McKinnon now starts at running back. That's cool. Defensively, Kirkpatrick now jumps in as number four corner. Sample and Batamosi are going to be the starting safeties, I guess. We could have Kirkpatrick start at safety if I wanted to, but... We'll see what this draft has to offer. Oh, man. What is Terrell Pryor's future? His contract is probably up next season as well. So I think that'll be where we wrap it up. I think we'll go this next season. We'll see what we can get him, what we can get him to. And then we'll give him a contract extension and we'll wrap up the video. I feel like I've done the job. I feel like I've gotten... Yeah, we haven't had great team success. We've made the playoffs a couple of years but we haven't had great team success, but I feel like that's not some of the point anyway. I feel like I've gotten Terrell Pryor to be, he's obviously much better than what he was in real life. He, we started him at a 60 overall, and now he sits at what, a 78, a 79? He starts, sits at a 78 overall. He's got star development now. He's getting up there at age at 27. He's, he's getting his accuracies up there for sure. I feel like I've made him a quality NFL quarterback, a very, very good NFL quarterback. And if I were to get him up over 80 overall officially, instead of just being up there with a boost, then I feel like that's a good mark. It's just so difficult when he's not getting the star development early. If he would have got star development in season one or season two, then maybe things would be a little bit different. But not getting star development until season four, whatever it was, it's just put it, set him behind the eight ball a little bit too much. Offensive line, I think, is honestly pretty good. We don't have to draft offensive line. I think we need to draft linebacker or wide receiver, maybe? No, wide receiver's pretty good, honestly. We have Kelvin Benjamin. We have Stefan Diggs. We could just draft Derrick Henry and get a freaking stud at running back over Jarek McKinnon. Or I could take a linebacker. Deion Jones is right there staring at me. Deion Jones is right staring at me in the face, and I don't know what to do. We know how good Deion Jones can be. And I don't think I can pass it up. Deion Jones, welcome to the team. I simply... Oh, it got glitched. I hate this game, man. It says we took Joey Bosa. He went number one overall. I, it got glitched. Who'd they take? I guess we'll never know. Well, this draft is already a bust now because it got glitched like that. And it might be glitched again. It might very well be glitched again. Let me see if I can draft Yannick Ngakwe. Nope. Draft is glitched. Throw it away. Throw it away. Draft whoever you want. I don't care. Draft whoever you want. I hate when that happens, man. I hate when that happens. It's so frustrating because there's guys that I like to get and then you just can't do it. You have to let the CPU handle it, so... 
frustrating, but who'd we take? Hopefully he took some good players. We took Fernan Butler, James Bradbury, Isaac Samalu. Okay, we didn't we in fact did not take very good players. That's kind of disappointing. But it'd be more disappointing if this was an actual rebuild for the Raiders. And not just trying to get Terrell Pryor to be as good as we can. All right, what could potentially be the final season is about to be underway. We'll see how we do. We will generate the best lineup. Offensive line looks pretty good. Tight end is looking better now with the star development of Richard Rodgers. If we can get it, Terrell Pryor over an 80 overall, I'll be happy. I will I will be happy and I will consider that a success. Defensively, we'll see what we can do here. James Bradbury's got the freaking development trait. Cool. I'm actually going to start James Bradbury strong safety. Why the F not, man? You drafted me him, so why not start him there? It's better than Sample, I guess. So I'm going to simulate what could be the final season. As always, if something happens with Terrell Pryor, I'll bring you guys back in. Most likely it won't. So I'll see you guys at the end of the season. Okay, so I got to bring you guys back in because Terrell Pryor had a breakout scenario. I think we're around week six or seven or something like that. He had a breakout scenario. I accepted it, obviously. And the very next week, he got it done. Superstar development for our quarterback, Terrell Pryor. Oh, I can't believe it. I cannot believe we've actually got it to superstar development. It's taken long enough. <laughs> it is taken long enough to get this boy to where he needs to be. And now I feel really good about having him where we need him. I feel like I'm confident in the fact that he's gotten where he needs to be. We've revived his career, most certainly. Most certainly revived his career. There he is. 80 overall officially right now. We still got a, a ways to go in the season, but superstar development. You gotta love it. You gotta love it, big dog. That's good stuff. I feel more happy with ending it after this season now the fact that we've gotten him up to superstar development. So I'm going to continue simulating. Again, if anything else happens, if he gets happens to get up to X-Factor this year, I'll bring you guys back in. But if not, I'll see you guys at the end of the year. We've wrapped up the year, and we actually had the number one seed this time. 13 wins. Terrell Pryor seems to be getting in his groove. Unfortunately, uh, there was no more breakout scenarios or anything. So he's still, as far as I know, a superstar development player. But let's go see just how well he did. 4,100 yards, 29 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, and I feel like we can now close the book on this. Franchise quarterback has been tagged to Terrell Pryor. That was the overall goal, was to get him to be a franchise quarterback for a team, and I, we've done that now. We've done that for Terrell Pryor. He did have a decent season on the ground. I mean, Kelvin Benjamin's becoming a, a number one receiver as well. It says he's day one starter now. Richard Rodgers is becoming great because he's in the Chiefs playbook. And then we've also turned R Rolando McClain into a fantastic player as well. So I feel like some of our little sub goals have also worked out by getting some of these lesser uh, players to become also really, really good players. Now, I'm not going to jump in for the AFC Championship. If we get to the Super Bowl, we get to the Super Bowl. Remember, this isn't about winning a Super Bowl for Terrell Pryor. It's icing on the cake, but it's not the overarching goal because that's, we're not trying to rebuild the Raiders. We're trying to get Terrell Pryor to be good. So I will simulate this. If we do jump in, if we do get into a Super Bowl, I will jump into it and see what happens. But that's judging if we if we beat the Texans, and we do, we will play in a Super Bowl for the first time against Washington. Okay. A little Washington versus Raiders in the Super Bowl. Very intriguing. Very, very intriguing. Oh, this is this is kind of big because this would cement the whole goal. We've gotten Terrell Pryor to be a franchise quarterback. He's led this Raider team to the Super Bowl. If we were to win it, that would be awesome. It's not the end of the world if we don't, but that would be awesome if we did. Terrell Pryor playing up to an 87 overall. Kelvin Benjamin is an X factor, so I feel like that's a little bit of a check on re on turning him into a solid player. Richard Rodgers is a superstar. 
Rolanda McLean, we can check that off. We've turned him to a, a very talented player. Chimney Chiqua even has turned into a great player. So I feel like I've done more than just Terrell Pryor in this video. I feel like I've done a lot of different people turning them into studs. But there's one final task to do, and that is to hopefully win the Super Bowl. Let's go see if we can do it. It is Super Bowl time here in the Terrell Pryor <laughs> Revive Series, Revival Series, and we are trying to get this job done. We're down 7-3 to Washington, but we're trying our best to get this one done. I don't know if it's going to happen. It's third down. We might have to jump in and try to help the boys. Now, remember, this mod kind of gets glitchy, so that's why the, the shading and the lighting kind of looks a little weird on the players on the field. But that's not what really matters. What really matters is trying to get a championship for Terrell Pryor, and they want us to go for it here on fourth and inches. I respect it. It's the Super Bowl. We ain't got nothing else to play for. It is the bowl of all bowls. We're going to go to Jarek McKinnon, and he didn't get it because it was a bad pass from Terrell Pryor. Well, that was not the ideal scenario. I was hoping that that ball would be accurate enough to be caught for a first down, but didn't go that way. We got the two-point conversion, too, so it's 14-11. to 11. Now it's 21-11. to 11. I think Washington might just be a better team than us. I don't know if it's going to happen. 21-14 to 14 after the field goal. We're going to have to drive down the field and get the job done here. It's 4th and 11. We got nothing else. We got nothing else in this game. Do we just heave it to Kelvin Benjamin, of all people? I think we just heave Kelvin Benjamin down the field. Incomplete overthrown. Just too much of a cannon for Terrell Pryor. He's got too much arm strength. And we are going to fall in the Super Bowl to the Washington Commanders. That's little upsetting i was hoping we could end with a, a championship for terrell Pryor, but hey the fact that he got there is impressive the fact that we got a terrell Pryor to a super bowl as him as the starting quarterback is in its own right very impressive so sucks that we lost but hey it, it is what it is it is what it is and now i think we can reward terrell Pryor's success and his his hard work with a new contract as we upgrade all the bench players. We'll go into the season recap just to see if anything happened for us and for Terrell Pryor. Uh, no, Ryan Kerrigan gets MVP of the Super Bowl, but no no awards or anything for Terrell Pryor. That's okay. But let's go and give Terrell Pryor his well-deserved contract extension. Tyron Matthew, Khalil Mack, it's a good thing we're ending because there's a lot of guys here. But Terrell Pryor, $182 million, seven-year deal, franchise quarterback type of money right here this is patrick mahomes level although patrick mahomes isn't in the league yet <laughs> they don't know who that is this is tom brady at his peak if he wasn't taking pay cuts i don't have the salary cap to make that money okay i'll lower it a little bit how about that do i have enough there we go i had enough money to make that that work and terrell Pryor now has a guaranteed seven-year contract max extension he's it's deserving it is deserving of what he's done. 82 overall at 28 years old. Franchise type of player. Deserves franchise type of money. So he's got his extension. And we will look at his stats. And see just how he did. Got him up to superstar development. It was a grind. This was one of the more difficult challenges I've taken on. Starting in normal development and not getting up to, super, uh, to start development quick enough really made it difficult this was a grind to get him to where we did but we got him there these numbers look very good this is a franchise quarterback type of number very good numbers from him he's got superstar development he's gonna be the franchise for the next four or five years so the Raiders are in a good spot. They've got Stephon Diggs. They've got Kelvin Benjamin, two franchise receivers. They've got Richard Rodgers, a franchise tight end. You've got franchise players all on the offensive line. On defensive side of the ball, you've got Lamar Houston, who's now an X-Factor, who's a franchise player. Khalil Mack. You've got Tyron Matthew, Chimney Chiqua, Bra uh, James Bradbury. You've got Rolanda McClain. This team is set up for a beautiful dynasty type of run, but that is where I'm going to check out. I'm going to hand in my pink slip. I'm going to hand in my... My papers, my walking papers, I'm done. We built Terrell Pryor up to be a franchise quarterback, and that was the only goal. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Thank you so much. Stop by and watch. I truly appreciate it. Like I said before, if you have any suggestions for other players you want to see me take on in either the Revival series, which is what this is, or if you want to see me take on guys like Dejuan Johnson or Tommy Tremble, like I've done before with those videos, let me know down below in the comments of any of my videos, but specifically these ones. And that's going to do it for me. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.